Here's a very common question related to power series. We're often given a power series and asked about its radius of convergence and its interval of convergence. What that means is, if you're looking at a number line, if these are x values, <clears throat> this series here will converge for certain x's, like these, but diverge for other x's. So we want to know what that interval is for the x values that will make this series converge. And then uh, it actually turns out that these converge usually to the left and the right of some center value. And so that distance from the center out to the edge is called the radius of convergence. So these two guys are closely related, um, although they're a little different. The radius of convergence is a numerical value. The interval of convergence is, well, an, it's an interval. Um, so how do we do this? Well, there's a, a couple things we can do to begin. Um, first thing is to figure out where is this guy centered? That's what we talked about in the previous video. Uh, to see where it's centered, we look at the term inside the parentheses that contains the x, and we set it equal to zero. So if x minus four equals zero, then x would equal four. x minus four equals zero, then x equals four. And so four is where this power series is centered. So we can start there. And then what we know is that if there is an interval of convergence, then it will converge around four. Um, it might be just a little ways around four or a very wide margin around four or no margin at all around four, but uh, is centered at four. Now, how do we actually find the convergent, the interval of convergence? Uh, well, what we typically use more often than not is the ratio test. The ratio test is a very good test to determine the convergence of power series. So let's do that. So here's the terms that we're adding up. This is gonna be considered our a sub n. So we'll have a sub n equal to this guy. And I assume that we're pretty familiar with the ratio test. It would say the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value, x minus four to the n plus one divided by quantity. All right, so what we're doing here is we're taking out the n's and replacing them with n plus ones for the ratio test. Now, I, I can't say 2n plus 1 because that, that's not correct. If I took out the n and swapped the n with an n plus 1, I could either put the n plus 1 in parentheses, but to be honest, that looks pretty messy. That's a whole lot of parentheses going on. Uh, what, what we would rather do, I think, is distribute that to to the n and the one and call it two n plus two factorial. That just looks a little bit simpler. Okay, so that's two times the quantity n plus one, right? So two n plus two factorial times, <clears throat> and then rather than taking a sub n plus one dividing by a sub n, because both of those are a fraction, what we typically do is for the a sub n, since it's a fraction, we will multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll have 2n factorial divided by x minus 4 to the n in absolute values. This almost always simplifies a pretty, pretty fair amount. For example, the x minus 4 to the n plus 1 divided by x minus 4 to the n, you have one more factor of x minus 4 in the numerator than you do in the denominator, so you'll have an x minus 4. Now the factorials, we've practiced this as well. Well, uh, how you typically reduce large factorials is especially if you have two of them here, you'll start peeling off layers of the larger factorial. So you'll have two n plus two. So you take that individual term off and then it'll shrink to two n plus one factorial. But now if I put a factorial here, that's not going to cancel with 2n factorial. It doesn't look alike. So let me peel off another layer. Let me peel off the 2n plus 1. So I'm peeling off these higher terms one at a time. 2n plus 2 times the one below it, 2n plus 1. Now what's below 2n plus 1? I think it's just 2n. And so I can take 2n times the one below it, times the one below it, times the term below it, and just uh, use that as the factorial. And so I peel off enough higher layers until I get the same factorial term as the numerator, the smaller guy, and then these will cancel. Okay, so when it's all said and done, I think here's what we have. 
All right, we have uh, a limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value. Okay, now look at the x minus 4. Do you see how the x minus 4 doesn't depend on n? It's just an x minus 4. So you can pull it outside the limit. So if it doesn't depend on n, it can come outside the limit. Now, uh, these are these are gone. The factorials are gone. We, we only have 1 over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. The 2n factorials canceled. And these cannot come outside the limit because they have n's in there. All right, so as n goes to infinity uh, right here with this limit, where does this expression go? 1 over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. It goes to 0. And what's 0 times anything? I think this would be 0. Now, this is a peculiar answer. I get 0 for my answer. What, what does that mean exactly? Well, let's, let's think about the ratio test. When we were doing the ratio test, what we wanted to happen was for this limit to be less than 1. And that, that would mean that the series converged. But this had no bearing on x, and that's, that's strange. Um, regardless of what x is, if I picked x to be 2, 7, or 1,000, because this is going to zero, this whole thing is going to zero regardless of our choice for x. So, so what does that mean exactly? Well, first of all, I do realize that this is good news. Zero being less than one means that this series um, on the previous page, this will converge. But again, it's funny that I haven't talked about what specific x is. Well, it turns out it converges for all x's. Right, converges for every x, right? Because you can pick any x, and then when you multiply it times zero, you get zero, which is always less than one. So what does that mean in the big picture? Uh, that means that your radius of convergence would be r equals infinity, right? Because it converges for all x's, and you can go as far as you want to the right and to the left of four, and always converge. So your interval of convergence would be from minus infinity to infinity written in uh, interval notation.